This story starts in 1989 after I have given a lecture in Trombay, near Bombay, the Baba Atomic Center in India. Now, don't worry that the fact that I'm starting in 1989 doesn't mean I will go from now on day by day until today. I will jump over many things. What I presented there, the company that I ran at that time called Fusion Energy Corporation, had been developing the so-called colliding beam fusion. We had taken at that time the attitude that uh, controlled fusion has nothing to do with plasma physics. It was, uh, and still is in our opinion, matter of accelerator and beam engineering. Colliding beams offer immediate uh, high temperature equivalents and um, the technologies for storing particle beams have, are much more developed than storing low energy plasmas. Well, after the lecture, I was invited to the director's office. The physicist there telling me, you have not invented uh, a new fusion device. What you have invented is a new thorium uranium-233 breeder. And I didn't understand what they meant. Uh, of course, they started we working on it. And as you can see on this slide, just uh, two months later, we already had a joint paper. These two authors, one is Iyengar, at that time chairman, of Atomic Energy Commission of India and Srivinasan, director of Neutron Division. They essentially adopted my device for the purpose described here, feasibility of breeding uranium using DD Exciter. Have you ever heard about Exciter? Of course not. We had coined this word for the, for the device that would be used specifically for this purpose. Basically, they concluded that the net uranium-233 production using Exciter is estimated to be 100 grams per day or 35 kilograms per year at practically no cost. Why no cost? Because there will be in parallel going fusion reactions that will pay for the part of the electricity. The device we are talking about uh, is called cell colliding beams. It used the magnetic field of six Tesla, which even to this date for this volume is the strongest magnetic field. The device actually that uh, they propose to be the breeder is a disc inserted between the two superconducting magnets. The injector is an accelerator, as you can see, injecting 1.4 MeV D2 ions to be compared with the injectors in Tokamak, which is 5 to 10 kilovolts, kilo electron volt. This is 1.4 MeV to form colliding beams of MeV against MeV. Million electron volts corresponds to a temperature of 10 billion grades centigrade if you convert it into kinetic temperature. In the magnetic field, one injects D2 ions and dissociates them in the middle. So from D, from two, for a molecule, it becomes colliding beams of atomic deuterium. And as you, as you can uh, follow here, you can see that these orbits collide head-on in the center by themselves. This has worked very well, achieved a confinement time of 30 seconds as compared to confinement times uh, in f plasma fusion devices where typically 30 milliseconds. This is uh, how self-colliding orbits are formed. It takes about nine seconds and then we stop the injection of the beam to measure the colliding time. The fact that we were able to stabilize one MeV particles colliding with themselves has nothing to do with plasma physics. We have borrowed technologies in accelerator engineering, from accelerator engineering. In this specific case, we had made the electron oscillate through MIGMA at a certain frequency, suddenly it became stable. So if, if you compare our par parameters with the with the thermonuclear, which this is the temperature, the tokamaks and so on. We had started immediately with injecting the beams, so we operated the temperature essentially 10 billion degree equivalent. This, this is not a real temperature. If you want to achieve the same colliding energy, it would have to be heated to 10 billion degrees. We achieved this uh, by the, in the 80s, but the density was not good enough. And then came a very well-known accelerator physicist and engineer, John Blewett, who proposed a new magnetic confinement called strong focusing, which is again, strong focusing is used in all accelerators, 
while the previous device that we built was so-called weak focusing. Bluet's invention of making strong focusing self-colliding orbits appeared as a sure shot and Glenn Seaborg immediately decided to support it. We had formed with him as chairman a company called Advanced Physics Corporation in order to obtain funds from the Department of Energy to build advanced version of self-colliding orbits. But we were constantly turned down on the policy grounds that all fusion money has to go to Tokamak only. Then uh, Glenn Seaborg uh, deceased and uh, I decided to, that we are ahead, probably 20 years ahead of the pack. So I decided to spend another 10 or 15 years doing something else. Um, <laughs> and now I'm returning to this uh, problem because I feel that it's an idea whose time has come. The new design of Exciter, which we call OXciter, is being first time disclosed here. This is a system that um, has uh, six, uh, eight accelerators injecting the beams, portable particle accelerators, they cost $100,000 and they can be screwed onto anything you want to inject the beam. They have been developed for uh, oil prospecting, made round to go deep into the wells. And the idea here is now instead of having that large accelerator that we had in the first design to have uh, sufficiently high energy here, like 200 kilovolts, injecting the beam, creating a MIGMA, but the undissociated one goes back to the accelerator to be re-accelerated back and again and again in this process, producing neutrons and the thorium would be placed here. I will use the same number. When we made first presentation, Glenn Seaborg and I were making presentation to a group of investors. The numbers are the ones that may be controversial, but I will take them from the Indian paper. We have our own new numbers and I didn't want to present them before they are confirmed. Exciter means strong focusing self collider as opposed to weak focusing self collider that uh, you saw was operational. One unit with a 300 liter unit like you've seen in the picture and they would be modular and 30 of these units will be able to produce uh, 100 grams of uranium-233 because there is also a question 100 grams of neutrons or 100 grams of uranium-233. The energy input now if we do not have any energy from fusion. If fusion is used only to produce neutrons and the whole system is driven purely by, from the plug, from the electricity, gross energy cost per gram of neutrons would be $8,000, assuming six cents of industrial scale per kilowatt hours. In other words, gross energy cost per neutron using efficiency of 65%, about five million electron volts per neutron. It is considered that anything below 200 MeV per neutron is economically feasible. But now we say we don't have a fusion reactor, but it will just produce a little fusion, 15%. We immediately are reducing the price significantly to four and a half MeV per neutron. In other words, 119 megawatt hours per gram or $7,000 per gram. It is not a fusion reactor. It is a, it is a fusion device where DD is producing fusion and producing neutrons. And just, just a little, but since they inevitably uh, release energy of uh, essentially four MeV per, per unit, it, it contributes. And the argument of the, our Indian friends was even a small contribution has a large effect on the price even small extra energy has large effects on the price. This still has to be checked. There is a big shortage of helium-3, and now it, the government is selling it for $1,000 a liter. The reaction is DD going into neutron plus helium-3 plus 3.2 MeV. In parallel, DD going into proton plus triton. So we produce neutrons to breed uranium-233. We produce helium-3 and we produce tritium, which is also, there is a crisis. Our, we our nuclear weapons have to be replenished every three years because tritium has a decay and um, they weaken. So there is a shortage of tritium. 
which also becomes helium-3. Therefore, as an extra bonus, the system will be generating $14,000 worth per hour uranium-233 and $7,000 worth of helium-3, $7,000 worth of tritium. So actually, if you add it all together, it will be, it produces 100 grams per day, it will generate an income of $2 million a day, just one unit. This is uh, the size of the unit is this, and they are packed this way, and 30 units will take between the wall and here. That one unit will produce 100 grams of uh, uranium-233 and the same amount of uh, tritium and the same amount of helium-3. So essentially, not that it will uh, not cost anything, but actually, it, in addition to generating uh, uranium-233, it will generate money. <laughs> Thank you very much, Thank you. Appreciate it.